All right. Brother yes, Ward, I think we are right at the hour at 706. If you uh if you would be so kind to start us and then I'll follow your lead with prayer. Yes. Brothers, it's always good to be with you, and I hope you all have had a, a wonderful and safe and blessed week. I always look forward to these Wednesday sessions where we can come together and pray and thank God for his continued grace and mercy. So it's always an honor to be with you. I would ask tonight that we really keep in prayer the family of Brother Al Edwards, former state legislator from the state of Texas, was a dear friend and someone that I served with on the Democratic National Committee, but a good alpha brother that we lost. Uh, and so we can just keep he and his family in prayer. So with that, brothers, it's always good to see you and uh, look forward to us being together face to face very soon. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Ward. I want to begin um, with a pastoral prayer uh, before we tend to the Brother Mark Anthony uh, for song. So if you'll join me now, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Precious and wonderful God, hallowed be your name. God, once again, we count it a joy to come before you, notwithstanding our circumstances, but we come before you blessed and highly favored as your children. We are thankful, dear God, that you are God all by yourself. We are thankful for all you've done in our past. We're thankful, dear God, with optimism as we look forward to the future, but we also are thankful, dear God, in the moment called now. We come before you as a body of believers and as the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha. We pray, dear God, for our fraternity's leadership, lifting up the current leadership, lifting up past leadership, and lifting up, dear God, leadership that is to come. We also offer special prayers now, dear God, for our brother, departed and called home to be with you, the Honorable Al Edwards, a representative from Texas, dear God, who served with distinction. We are thankful for the legacy that he leaves, and we pray, dear God, that that legacy will live on. We also pray, dear God, for all those who have been affected by the coronavirus in our ranks and all those who have been called a transition from the church militant to the church triumphant. We recognize that you are able, and dear God, you are worthy to be praised. So we pray for those who have been affected and we pray, dear God, for areas that have been affected, for members of our fraternity and those who are not members of the fraternity because we count them our brothers and our sisters as part of humanity. So dear God, for geographic areas like New York, like New Orleans, like Detroit and other areas that have been so disproportionately affected, dear God, recognizing that healthcare should be a right in the United States of America because of so many past practices and habits, dear God, African-Americans are still fighting from behind. So as our community is so disproportionately affected, as our community is so adversely affected, we ask that you will show up and show out, dear God, as you always have, because all by yourself, you are able. We love you, we praise you, we ask you to bless all of our members. We ask you to bless all of the families of our members. We ask you to bless humanity. And we know, dear God, that you will bring us through this tough time because you've brought us through so many tough times in the past. We praise you. We love you. And most importantly, right now, dear God, we take this opportunity simply to say thank you. Now, these and all of the blessings we ask in the perfect, the precious, the matchless and the marvelous name of your son and our savior. Amen. Amen. We are delighted today to have um, Brother Mark Anthony Henry with us. Uh, Brother Henry, a wonderful alpha brother, is uh, the director of the New York City Gospel Choir. Uh, that means he has some very special talents. And uh, we are delighted that he has agreed to share with us his gifts and songs. So, Brother Henry, I tend to you and I say thank you for being with us. God bless you, brother. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, and I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield. And I was a sinner too. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, There is work to do. Then I took the 
master's hand and I joined the strong man. So much, my goodness, amen. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful, amen. That right, that's right, bro, Paul. That deserves it. That deserves a round of applause, amen, amen. Um, as we turn back to prayer, um, I am thankful. On the call, we have uh, the Reverend Dr. Jonathan C. Richardson, a brother beloved. He is the pastor of Cornerstone United Methodist Church in New Orleans. Uh, we all are aware that New Orleans is one of those areas. Uh, uh, we've hosted so many general conventions in New Orleans. I'm just going to assume that just about every brother here has been to New Orleans, but it's one of America's favorite cities, and it is unfortunately a city that's being disproportionately affected uh, statistically by the coronavirus. So, uh, Brother Dr. Richardson, if you would be kind enough to leave us in, lead us rather in prayer, brother, we're thankful to have you. Uh, brothers, let us pray. Oh. God, in whose presence our soul takes delight, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We lift up not only the brotherhood of Alpha, but the brother and sisterhood of man to you. And we pray for a hedge of protection around all of us. Oh God, we thank you that you are a wall of fire around about all of us and that you set your angels around all of us. We thank you, Jesus, that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We say of you, Lord, you are our refuge and our fortress. In you shall we trust. Oh God, you cover all of us during this pandemic time with your feathers. And under your wings shall we trust. Oh God, allow all of us, we shall not doubt that we shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow of corona that flies by day. Only with our eyes will we never ever behold or see the reward of the wicked because we, oh God, we know you because you have made us. Lord, you are our refuge and fortress. No evil shall befall us, O oh God. God, no accident will overtake us. Neither shall any plague or calamity come near any of us, O oh God. For you give your angels charge over us and keep us in all your ways. Father, because you have set your love upon all of us, therefore will you deliver us. Oh God, we call upon you and you will answer us. You will be with us in trouble and will satisfy us 
with long life and show us your salvation. Not a hair we ask, not a hair we ask of any of us, of any of our heads shall perish. It's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. It's in Jesus' name that we say with a smile, amen. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Dr. Richardson. We're so grateful uh, for you leading us to the throne of grace. Thank you. Um, we want to transition back to music. Uh, Brother Mark Anthony has already delighted us, and I'm so thankful he has agreed to delight a second time and use the gifts that God has given him. So, Brother Mark Anthony. God bless you. Amen. Rise, shine. brothers thank you brother mark anthony henry thank you so much for allowing the lord to use you my good brother amen amen, amen. that um that in addition to uh to being a song uh that followed prayer uh was also sort of a pre-sermonic selection uh, it is my uh, honor for the sermonette and i emphasize sermonette <laughs> it's my honor to present a distinguished alpha brother uh the reverend dr vernon j hurt uh, uh, Brother Hurt has had a career uh, as a longtime Baptist minister in Virginia, uh, served in some wonderful pulpits, uh, but also as a university administrator. Uh, and Brother Ward, I'm proud to say, like you, he is one of the few Black Americans by comparison that has earned a PhD, uh, a doctor of philosophy degree. Um, he currently serves as the Dean of Student Affairs at Townsend State, having recently left uh, uh, Iowa State University and, uh, and having also served in a, in a similar capacity at the College of William and Mary while also pastoring in Virginia. So he is excited to be back in the Eastern region. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted to have known him for several years and to be able to call him a friend in addition to a brother. So Dr. Hurt, thank you so much for agreeing to share with us words of encouragement. God bless you, dear brother. Certainly the blessing to be with the brotherhood on tonight. Certainly wanna honor our uh, dynamic leader, our general president, Dr. Edward Ward. Uh, we praise God for your presence. And, uh, grateful to my brother, uh, Brother Dr. J. Augustine, our national chaplain, for the invitation to serve tonight. And all the brothers who have served and all the brothers who have gathered tonight, we're certainly grateful to be together. I want to call your attention for just a few moments to a familiar passage of scripture, the psalm found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 11 verses 28 through 30. From today's New International Version, it reads this way. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, 
and you will find rest for your souls. <laughs> for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So tonight I want to uh, challenge us with this word uh, from the thought, the ministry of rest. The ministry of rest. The rest for us, particularly as alpha men, it's a, it's a concept that is sometimes elusive uh, because we are men of leadership. We are men who are energizing the way forward. And all week long, I reflected on uh, the word that we were challenged with from Bishop Watson on last week as uh, the bishop uh, challenged us to uh, be mindful and to hear what God is doing in this moment and how God is speaking to us and to be in a place of readiness and preparedness for the assignment ahead for us as alpha men, for us as leaders. And I reflected on uh, this idea of hearing, but also this idea of preparation. And as I reflected on that, God challenged me to challenge us tonight that part of our preparation as leaders, part of our preparation as men, part of our preparation as those who are called to move the society, the country, the, even the world forward, that part of our preparation in this season must include the ministry of rest. Rest is an instant or period of relaxing or ceasing to engage in strenuous or stressful activity. It's hard particularly in times like this, in challenging moments to uh, embrace this concept of rest. But beloved, as we look all around us, when we look at particularly the experiences of us as uh, black men, uh, the impact that these moments, the impact that the stress and anxiety of this moment is having on so many of us, I believe, I believe God is calling us, particularly as leaders, to invest in the ministry, to exercise the ministry of rest in order for us to be prepared to do what Bishop Watson challenged us on last week, to yep. hear and respond to the very call of God as we move into this next season. I was challenged to embrace this concept uh, as I studied as a seminary in the work of Dr. Kirk Byron Jones, who wrote the book, Rest in the Storm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jones, who uh, talked about this pervasive form uh, contemporary form of self-violence, that we often don't allow ourselves to be uh, strengthened, to be uh, lifted up, to be embraced by the power of God, the presence of God, the very peace of God, so that we can be equipped and energized for the assignment that God has placed on our lives. As I think about this ministry of, of rest, I think about this passage of scripture that has arrested our attention tonight, because Jesus himself understood how the importance of exercising the ministry of rest has on our leadership, has on our ability to move the work forward. So Jesus understood that sometimes the faithful will become heavy laden, and in those moments we're called to exercise the ministry of rest. That's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Beloved, we're living in a challenging time, but one that is purpose-filled, and I'm convinced that for many of us, God is using this moment to command us to exercise the ministry of rest. And it's here in Matthew chapter 11 that Jesus gives us the formula for exercising the ministry of rest. It's pretty simple, and pretty basic, for Jesus simply commands us to come, to connect, and to copy. Mm. Watch the text, because the first thing Jesus teaches us is that exercising the ministry of rest requires that we come to him. Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Beloved, spiritual rest is a gift that is given by God, but we have the responsibility to come to Jesus in order to experience it. See, one of the reasons that many of us fail to get in that space of spiritual rest is that we believe the power to experience that type of rest lies in the hands other than our own. 
rest itself is a gift from God. However, the ability to experience it lies in our hands. The challenge for us today is where are we? Have we made it a priority to come to Jesus? And I don't mean a physical space. I mean a spiritual space. I mean a mental space. We need to be in the space where Christ is so that we can hear his voice, so that we can be strengthened, that we can have that peace that surpasses all understanding, even in the midst of a pandemic. Where are you today? Are you dwelling in your own space? Are you making it a priority to come into the space where Christ is dwelling? It's a choice that we've got to make, and one of the keys to experiencing rest is making sure that we're where Jesus is. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But not only are we challenged to come to Jesus, but then Jesus also challenges us to be connected. There's a difference between coming and connection. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But then Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. The idea of putting on a yoke doesn't sound restful to me. If you're not familiar with a yoke, it's a wooden cross piece that is fastened over the necks of two animals and attached to the plow or cart that they are to pull. It's like a harness that's made for two. Jesus said, you've got to take on my yoke if you want to experience rest. That seems real interesting in that this tool that's designed for work is also a tool that allows us to rest. So even in the midst of our leadership, even in the midst of our call to move the work forward, to lead our communities, our families, even the world, God is challenging us that in the midst of that work, we've also got to invest in the ministry of rest. And in order to do that, we've got to be yoked up with Christ. We have to be connected with Christ because the reality is Jesus has already done the heavy lifting. And our ability to live and exercise the ministry of rest is grounded in our willingness to both come to Christ, but also to be yoked up, to be connected with Christ. Who are you connected with today? How are you finding ways to remain connected to Jesus. It's not just enough to come to him, but we've got to also connect with him. True spirit. So go where Jesus is and don't just be there, but be connected, be yoked with him. You may be asking yourself, how is this possible? Well, it's possible because Jesus is saying that when you're connected to me and when you're yoked up to me, you're working, but you're never doing hard work. Jesus said, I've taken care of all of the, the heavy lifting, the really hard work. Jesus is reminding us that we run the risk of becoming weary in seasons like this when we do the well-doing without him. When you're yoked up to Jesus Christ, it means we're so connected that we're constantly following him. We're constantly working with him. We're constantly cooperating with Christ. Beloved, rest is the result of obedience to Christ. And our rest is a result of our faith and trust in God to do the hard work. And in turn, we just follow and do the work that we're called to do. Jesus said, come to me all, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is is light. First of all, Jesus teaches us to come to him, and then he challenges us to connect with him. And lastly, beloved, the text teaches us to recognize that exercising the ministry of rest requires that we copy him. In other words, we have to follow the very example of Christ. There are two powerful moments in the life and ministry of Jesus that I believe gives us examples to follow when it comes to the ministry of rest. The first we find in Mark chapter 6, Jesus and the disciples had been on a ministry marathon. After touching so many lives and working hard in their assignments, Jesus provides them with some life-giving instructions. In chapter 6, verses 30 through 32, the Bible says the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught 
then, then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. We need to copy Jesus' okayness with exercising the ministry of rest from time to time. And it could it be that part of the purpose of this moment is for some of us to sit down, mm. to get alone by ourselves and learn how to exercise the ministry of rest, even as we lead, even as we push the agenda forward and the work forward. Sometimes God is calling us to pause and exercise the ministry of rest. And when we do that, we're copying the very example of Jesus. The last experience is one that all of the synoptic writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, tell us about. It was a moment in the ministry of Jesus where he and his disciples found themselves in the midst of the storm. And some might say that we're in the midst of a storm right now. Mm. The wind was raging and the waves were high, so the water was beginning to fill the boat. Yet in the midst of all of this, Jesus was chilling in the back of the boat, asleep. Beloved, we're in the midst of a challenging season. And you may be asking yourself, how in the world can we rest in a time like this? Well, as I close, I believe a songwriter penned some words that reflected the truth why Jesus was and why we're able to rest in the midst of such challenging times. For the songwriter declared, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadows grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hands and helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms when the storm of life is raging and the billows roll. So glad he shall hide me safe in his arms. And brothers, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I can say I'm in his arms because there is love in his arms. There's peace in his arms, there's joy in his arms, there's protection in his arms. And I declare that if we allow ourselves to rest in the arms of God, God will see us through, God will strengthen us and encourage us in the journey. We'll be rested, rejuvenated, and prepared with new strength to lead our families, to lead our communities, to lead this country, to lead this world into the season ahead. God bless you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Hurt. My dear brother, thank you so much for the blessing. My God, thank you for the blessing. Brother Ward, if you will allow me, I want to um, I want to say something about two very classy brothers in your fraternity. Uh, first, Brother Hurt, I, I butchered the title and I said Dean of Students. Now, Brother Hurt has too much class to, to, uh, to correct me on the spot like that. Um, uh, I guess he said somebody else would do that for him. Uh, that was that was probably two jobs ago. Brother Hurt is the vice president of student affairs at Townsend State. And the person that did the correcting, of course, is our chief protocol officer, Brother Brother Schamberger, who used to work with him at Iowa State. So he was, he sent me a text, text message. I said, I'm going to be sure to correct this with everybody. I just I thank both of you all for that. Um, as we prepare now, Brother Henry Goodgame is on. I thank you, my brother, for the gifts God has given you. And I thank you for sharing them with your beloved fraternity. Uh, as I prepare to tend to the Brother Good Game to lead us in the fraternity hymn, uh, next week we will have another Alpha's Word on Wednesday, hashtag Alpha's Wow. And uh, uh, Brother Dr. Stephen Lyons will, will provide words of encouragement for us then, Brother Lyons from North Carolina. So I invite everyone to come back and everyone to please invite someone else. Thank you all of you all this evening. Thank you so much, Brother Mark Anthony Henry. Thank you so much, Brother Jonathan Richardson. Thank you so much. Uh, Brother Vernon J. Hurt, thank you for being such a blessing. Brother, good game. Brothers, if you would put us, I guess, all on, on mute, I think we're going to try to go through this a different way this time and sing along. Mm -hmm. In our dear Fraternal spirit mine, all our noble, our true and courageous. 
heavenly deeds, scholarship, and love for all mankind are the aims of our dear fraternity. Alpha by Alpha, the pride of our hearts and loved by us dearly are thou. We cherish thy precepts, thy better shall be raised to thy glory, thy honor and renown. We hold ever aloft noble ideals and aims. Carrying out earth's and heaven's grand command, our true hearts ever strive, success is goal to gain, that our fraternity's praises may be sung. Alpha. By Alpha, the pride of our hearts, and loved by us dearly are thou. We cherish thy precepts, thy better shall be raised. To thy glory, thy honor and renown. College days swiftly pass, imbued with memories fond, and the recollection slowly fades away. Our true heart ever strive, and dear fraternal bond. May they ever abide and with us stay. Sing it, brothers. Alpha by Alpha, the pride of our hearts, and loved by us dearly are thou. We cherish thy precepts. Thy banner shall be raised to, to thy glory, thy honor and renown. All together, brother. <coughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. May the true, May the true spirit, spirit of eternity rule our hearts, hearts guide, guide our, our hearts. thoughts, and, and control, control our lives. So that we, so that may, we become may become through thee, through thee. Amen. Sir, 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 Sir. Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers, all so much. God bless you. God keep you. I pray God's blessings on each and every one of you and on your families. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, sir. God Thank bless. you, brother. All right. God bless you, you all. Bless. Great one, brothers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother Henry. Sir.